This was a Sigma 15 millimeter f2.8 fisheye lens. Let's take a look at it. Hey everybody, Tom here for After Chat. Uh, I am looking at the Sigma 15 millimeter fisheye lens. I've had this for about a week now. I've actually got to go return it today. Um, from our friends up at Borrow Lenses, up in Waltham, so I got a little bit of a drive ahead of me after I do this review, but I really did want to talk about this lens quite a bit today. Um, I've shot with the Canon 8-15 f4, and now I've shot with this uh, Sigma 15mm 2.8. Uh, very, very different lenses to shoot with. Uh, very, very different. I really like this lens, and I definitely rented it, and it definitely eventually will end up in my arsenal when I can come up with the about 600 bucks it is retail, maybe I'll find it a little cheaper used, but it is a wonderful fisheye lens. It uh, doesn't quite have as much distortion as the Canon, which when you're looking at a fisheye, you might want. I mean, I know I was looking for it, a little more of the, the small world uh, setup, but I was also able to push the fisheye on the Canon to 1413 uh, and kind of accentuate that some more. But for a 15 millimeter prime, this thing is awesome. It's f2.8, which lets you get that super narrow depth of field. It really allows you to just kind of accentuate your subject. Boom, and the background kind of blows out, but then you make it feel like your subject is the center of the world when you're, when you're doing this. Hi, Elliot. The Aperture Cat is back. Um, so it's a nice hefty lens. Like, a lot of times people pick up a lens that, that's this small and they go, ooh, it doesn't weigh anything. I've got the front cap, the rear cap off, and it is, it's got, it's got some weight to it. There's nothing to worry about here as far as, oh, is it, is it, is it built well? It's built well. It is uh, an EXDG, so it's in from the same series as my 2470. They're built really, really well. Um, it is auto and manual focus, thankfully. Uh, the autofocus is very good. On the center point, I would not autofocus a fisheye on any other point. Um, I did try it with, with my 6D. It was able to find focus on other points, at least the ones right around the center. The ones way out to the extreme, not so much. Um, it does not allow for manual override on the focus, which is something I was kind of shocked by for for an EX series lens. Um, all the other ones I've played with allow you to, once it's dialed in, you can tweak it a little bit. This, if you want to tweak it, you have to go to manual and... But you have a huge throw for how little dif focusing distance you need, because it only goes from, you know, 0.15 meters all the way out to infinity, with the last mark being at one meter, and that's still... I mean, here you go, here, here's stop to stop. I mean, that's basically a half turn. That's a lot of throw. Uh, so you can really, really fine-tune on the focusing here. Uh, it does come with basically two hoods. You have the built-in pedal hood, which is how I prefer to shoot. Um, this aligns with the wide side of your sensor being to the smaller pedals so they don't end up inside the image. Um, you can also take the hood off and you have a full round hood. Um, I didn't find that it got in the way of shooting, uh, and it lets you put a UV filter on or any other filter you want on, uh, but I always prefer to shoot a fisheye kind of naked like that. Um, I just feel like it works better. So I took this out and did a, a couple of test shots. Uh, I shot here in the studio a little bit. Uh, you can see that if I focus on, you know, I, I was shooting this at f2.8 because it's first time I had a fisheye at f2.8 and you can see that if I start focusing on something very close to me that I totally blow up the background that's what f2.8 does but that it has a 180 degree field of view so even though I'm focused on something right here that I'm looking at you can pretty much see the other side of the room that's definitely one of the reasons you would get a fisheye you're not doing it to keep things in proportion although I did find it amusing that uh, in Lightroom I found the um, lens calibration settings, the ones I use to like correct for vignetting and distortion, 
and there is one for this lens, which will turn it in, turn what you took into basically a 15 millimeter wide angle and flattens it out. I mean, it's really distorted on the edges, but it does look flat. It, does, it takes out all of the small world curvature to it. So that was very interesting to find. I did play with that a little bit. I have the luxury of getting over to the Spot Providence, which is actually why I rented the lens uh, for the week uh, to shoot the Roots of Creation. They are a band out of New Hampshire that I really like. They're pretty much an awesome jam band. Uh, but opening for them also was the Funky Dogs Brass Band out of Connecticut. Uh, they are two really great bands and they also play well together, which is always fun when you're at a small show and you get to see the bands play together. Uh, but when you get the horn section clumped up and you can get a picture like the of three horns players all playing their instruments, all kind of facing slightly off of one another so you can get that boom and it looks like just uh, you're seeing it right now. I mean, it, it's, it's a hell of a shot. I love it. Uh, but yeah, it, you imagine when you're shooting a fisheye, you're shooting like this. I mean, you, if you put your arms out, basically your entire periphery is what you're going to see through that fisheye. So if you take 10 feet back from the stage, one to 15 millimeter lens, so everyone on the stage is going to look tiny because now they're in this part of your field of view, or you're shooting this part of your field of view, and it's going to compress down. So you really got to be right on top of your subject if you're not looking for that super, super wide shot. Uh, so one of my favorite things to do with a fisheye lens at a concert is to get up on stage uh, towards the back of the stage if I can, um, if they'll let me. Uh, luckily, I was I was very lucky this past weekend. I mean, I got the to get on stage, get behind the band, and shoot out. It is kind of a cliche camera trick uh, concert shot to be to catch the back of the band looking out into the crowd, but. It always, it always just feels so good when you get that shot uh, and you get it to look good because um, it is a little tough to shoot with the fisheye. You you, your focus point is a little tricky to pick. Uh, it definitely takes a lot of practice to, to get down a, a good fisheye shot uh, at a concert. But you get that shot from behind and it's just boom. You, just, you know you've got it. Um, I also like to use it and actually... Going vertical with a fisheye is not as bad in the concert setting is not as bad as it is with a lot of other stuff. A lot of times you go vertical with a fisheye and it feels kind of weird because the distortion gets really extreme at the very top and very bottom as opposed to the outer left right where it's a little easier to kind of disregard it. Uh, but when you're shooting an artist and they've got their instrument and they're just, you know, that's what you're focused on and the blowout at the top and the bottom just kind of you don't pay that much attention to it. And it kind of really makes it feel like they are the show because the rest of the shot is just away from them. It, it's just, it doesn't even feel like they're at the show. Um, so that's, that's one of my other favorite things to do when I've got a fisheye. But it's definitely not something you would shoot an entire concert with. I mean, I would not say if you have one lens, take the fisheye. It's definitely a, a alternative lens to take with you to a show. And you can't be afraid to get right in someone's face with the lens because you have a minimum focusing distance of about six inches. I think this one specs out at 5.9 inches. So, I mean, that's about that far from my face. And that's going to get basically my whole face. Yeah, it's going to be a little warped and kind of weird. But it's almost like a macro lens, how well it focuses. And that's a huge, huge help because you can just get right in there or you can get way back. It's going to focus either way. You're going to be happy with your image. Um, as far as chromatic aberration at the concert, don't ask. The lighting is, it's a concert in a small venue. The lighting is constantly changing colors and it, it's hard to tell, but you've got to want that fisheye shot for that. Um, I mean, it's tack sharp. It focuses a little slower than I would like. Uh, definitely the Canon lens beat it there where it was just like, poof, got it. Poof, Got it. Now, Matt, granted, that could be the fact I had a Canon lens on a Canon camera, but I mean, it, it focused a lot faster. But it's also an F4, so you couldn't get the shallow depth of field. So you've always got those trade offs. Um, all in all, very, very happy with this lens. And I will add a fisheye to my arsenal, and it's most likely going to be this one because I like the, the 2.8, and I never really shot the Canon 
any wider than I think I took like two shots at 13 I kept in six days of shooting with it um, this everything's at 15 I most everything I shot with a cannon was at 15 so to get that 28 out of it big difference a lot, a lot more light coming in so definitely giving this a, a good review definitely um, I'll talk about it with Ryan on Aperture Chat this week, and we will finally put something back on the big board, and it probably won't score anywhere near like, oh, say, a 2470 lens, but it definitely is not more money than brains to have one of these if you're, if you're shooting anything where you want that kind of cool perspective. That's my review of the 15mm f2.8. EXDG fisheye lens from Sigma, which I got from Borrow Lenses this week. Uh, I definitely recommend you go, you grab it, rent it for a few days, play with it. It's a lot of fun. And if you're going to do anything where a really, really wide angle is very useful, give it a try in addition to your 14-24 or 10-14 to lens that you might be picking up as well. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive to rent for a couple of days. I mean, I've had it for a week, and it was like 68 bucks or something. I mean, it really wasn't bad. So definitely go out, grab one, play with it, have fun. They do make it in the Nikon mount as well. Same price, same availability. Have fun, and I'll see you later.